Thanks for click and play. My name is Marcus Vadas, and we are here at Postmodern Studios in Irvine, California. You're watching On Air, and I love Postmodern. I love it. I wouldn't go anywhere else, Ryan. Bones it. Thanks, man. We got a really cool uh, guest today. This guy uh, owns a magazine that I'm pretty sure you've read. It's called OC Metro. His name is Steve Cherm. He's from Cherm Media. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Steve, thanks for coming on board, man. My pleasure, Marcus. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming down. A lot of fun. Um, so tell me, how, how did how did Cherm Media get started? Did, was it Cherm Media that started first? Was it OC Metro? How did it all get started? I spent 14 years in daily journalism uh, with four California newspapers. My last stop was the LA Times, where I covered uh, politics and the environment. Um, loved it. Uh, I'm really a journalist at heart, and yeah. that's where I sort of cut my teeth in media. I uh, thought I was going to be the next Woodward and Bernstein, uh, maybe not both of them at the same time, but one <laughs> of them at least, and uh, loved it. Great training, great people, and it was all about communications, nouns, verbs, putting it together. But in 1990, I really felt there was something else I wanted to do, and uh, launched at that point Sherm Publishing, and uh, acquired a small publication here in Orange County, about 30,000 circulation, changed the name to OC Metro, and suddenly we were 100,000 copies every other week here in uh, what I think is one of the most dynamic marketplaces in the world, and that's Orange County. So take me back a little bit. In 1990, mm -hmm. how old were you, and, and how did it, you just, you started Sherm Publications? I mean, just like that? How did that come so about? So in my mid-30s, and I give a lot of credit to my father, who had been a very successful uh, businessman in the manufacturing sector, and he said, you know, you've got a great career as a journalist, but you can pretty much see where you're going to go. If you're out on your own, you can really become entrepreneurial and you can affect a lot of change and impact a lot of people. And I just really took that advice mm -hmm. and, uh, and left a very good job at the LA Times in yeah. my mid-30s and uh, uh, said, let's give this a try. And, uh, and we were doing that just as the recession of 90 to 94 was hitting. Wow. So the first three years were very lean, uh, tough going. Uh, but we, we survived, and by about 94, things began to turn positive for us. And then, so uh, you own some other publications aside from OC Metro. We do. So did this all come under the OC Metro umbrella? Are these all the same types of magazines? All controlled circulated, um, all under the Cherm Media, uh, if you will, umbrella. Mm -hmm. So we have OC Metro, which is a, a business publication aimed at professionals and executives here in Orange County. We then launched a, a family product called OC Family, which has um, uh, become a national um, uh, award winner just in terms of the content. And that's aimed at moms, uh, largely 25 to 40 year olds. Uh, and of course, women are the most important, dynamic, and uh, uh, most attractive consumer group. So uh, launched that, and then we put a sister com publication out in Inland Empire called Inland Empire Family. And mm -hmm. then about 2000, uh, acquired three little golf magazines that we folded under one title called Southland Golf. And you can find that from like Ventura to Chula Vista to uh, Coachella Valley and the Inland Empire. If I'm an advertiser, why would I put my ad in a magazine you know, that I can't really look at the analytics on? Or what kind of analytics can I look at to show that your, your magazine's pu pushing my product? Interesting, there have been some recent studies that have shown that of all the advertising that's out there, newspapers, magazines, internet, TV, radio, magazine advertising still remains the most credible in the eyes of the end user because generally when people are reading magazines they are not multitasking. When you're watching TV you may be eating, you may be on the computer. When you're looking at uh, video or, or, or Googling on a computer you may be listening to radio. Generally when you're reading a magazine particularly, more than a newspaper, you're focused on that one platform. So it's still a very effective medium because end users view it very credibly. So in the sense that you have that viewer's 100% focus. Exactly. exactly. So, you know, I mean, the argument that I have for magazines is when I'm on a plane or, you know, I don't need a laptop. I don't need to lug around right. a nine-pound laptop or make sure I've got power source. On the other side, you know, the Internet and, you know, even my phone, I can go anywhere and look up anything at any time and get the information way before I can get it on a magazine. So how do you guys respond to that? Well, we, we talk to a lot of our advertisers. Uh, we have a number of, of terrific um, uh, partners, Hoke Hospital, and I just this morning was writing a response to some questions they had about print versus online. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, I think my response is, 
print and online together is better. And it's the idea that you can cross market your brand in a local marketplace. Um, that mother who needs services at Hogue Hospital, she may be um, moving very quickly through her day. She may pick up OC Family Magazine at a particular stop along the way, um, see something she likes, sees the Hogue Hospital brand, and they can then point her to the website that she goes to once the kids are asleep at night when she has some time to go online. Same thing with Metro. It is cross-promoting a brand, and that's why we think the two in a hyper-local market like this still work, print and online together. Let's talk about um, online. How do you drive your readers, uh, not just your readers, but how do you drive people to OC Metro online? It's been, it's been a fascinating transformation. We have now spent a couple of years trying to go from being a print-centric company, realizing that that was a fatal strategy. I mean, mm -hmm. somewhere down the line, that, that, would, that would leave us with little or no business. We've gone from print-centric to really media-centric. And um, we have experimented along the way. And frankly, it has been challenging at times, both in terms of resources and making mistakes. But within Sherm Media, uh, we sort of subscribe to the idea that we can accept failure. Everybody fails at something. What I can accept is not trying and change is part of what we're doing. So, how do we take what is largely a print piece and take that brand and make it really a multimedia platform brand? Uh, we've done a number of things. Uh, we do the only daily business-to-business -business broadcast every morning called the OC Metro Minute. With right? Tina. With Tina Brigada. And um, uh, we have three or four short business stories, things that are happening right here in Orange County. We film that at 7.30 every morning. It's pushed out um, uh, onto our website, and we send it to our database uh, by 8.39 every morning. We do a daily email blast at 1.30 in the afternoon when you come back from lunch and you're scratching your head, you're not sure what you're going to do for the rest of the afternoon. In your inbox is a blast from OC Metro with headlines from that morning. Wow. So you sort of go through that. Every time one of those is clicked, carries you right back to the website. Sure. We're driving traffic. And um, since we started the e-blast uh, last 120, 150 days, we've tripled traffic onto our website and really expanded the brand and elevated beyond just being a strong print brand to something that is much more multi. Yeah. Do you notice uh, on your website, are people watching more videos and they're reading articles? Even on a hyper-local basis, uh, the appetite for video is huge. I mean, I don't think anybody has an idea where this ends if it ever does. Right. It's huge. And so we have ourselves gotten into video production. Uh, it's certainly not the quality of on-air and certainly what happens here at Post There's not a lot. I don't feel a lot of people are at this quality. You know, it's, um, it's but, but, but we find that it absolutely meets the demand. Yeah. Um, we're out interviewing uh, business professionals, executives about what's going on in their world. And frankly, yeah. it's, it's difficult out there. And yet capturing that video using um, HD cameras and, and, and some production work and putting it online has been a huge, huge, um, I think, Seems advantage to us. We're, we're in a nutshell, where do you see OC Metro going? Where do you see Cherm Media going in the future? Well, I see Cherm Media only becoming more valuable to this marketplace. Um, it, it is our responsibility, though, to understand how people want to receive news. It's our uh, responsibility to understand how advertisers want their messages delivered. And uh, we are evolving, and there is clearly a place in this marketplace uh, for us as, as we identify very strong niches of users. I mentioned uh, business professionals and executives, moms, uh, golf enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. um, we have a product that's quarterly OC menus that uh, reaching that dining audience. Uh, we have the ability to send very targeted messages and content to those highly desirable constituencies that advertisers are trying to reach. And I don't think that changes. What changes is how we're delivering that information and can we keep pace with, with the demand out there and how things are shifting. Steve, thanks for coming on board, man. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Uh, you know, I read a lot of these magazines, and OC Metro is definitely, uh, in, in my opinion, one of the best ones out there. So uh, pick it up, give it a gander. Thanks for click and play. We will see you next week on air. I'm your host, Marcus Vadas, and we are out of here.